Hello and welcome to the 2019-2020 winter forecast from NeoWeather. I'm meteorologist and president Brian Ivey along with Robert Carroll and Mark Spencer. These years just keep flying by. We're excited to bring you our ninth annual winter forecast. That's right. And this past couple of winters we've had have been challenging to pinpoint thanks to several factors, including a near neutral ENSO last year. Yet another tricky and complex winter forecast looks to be in store again this winter as Mother Nature just can't quite pick a side. Are we leaning towards an El Nino or a La Nina this year, Robert? Well, Mark, that's a good question as right now it looks like the Enzo cycle will be near neutral for a good part of the winter. But that doesn't mean this won't have an impact on our winter. We'll discuss this in more detail coming up. Absolutely. Things are coming more into view with some of the pattern drivers. Many factors like low solar activity, ocean and atmospheric circulations, and pressure patterns will come together to determine who sees the coldest air and who sees the heavy snow. Last year featured some very cold air and a lot of heavy snow across the plains and in the Midwest and Great Lakes. Could we see something similar happen again this season? Or with the cold and snow maybe being in a different spot, we'll have all the answers in tonight's presentation. And while you're watching our forecast, we'll feature our Neowise questions once again throughout the show. Now don't worry, we're not keeping score. It's and like who's lying? Yeah, the points don't matter. Your first question is coming up in just a moment. We'll also tell you how Neoweather can keep your business ahead of the winter weather with our suite of consulting services, including some new features this year. Stay tuned for the details on how you can receive accurate weather information for your business from us. Thanks, Robert. If you're watching our show live and have any questions, be sure to stay tuned at the end of the show for our live Q&A. We love answering anything that you have. Post any questions you have in the comments. Our winter forecast starts right now. So kicking things off with the weather maps, one of the things that we always have to talk about when we do a long range forecast is the general overall pattern. Now this isn't meant to be what's exactly going to happen all winter long. Things will change from time to time, but this is the overall setup that we expect across the nation. Here's your jet stream right here. It's going to be dipping down across likely the middle of the country and then up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Lots of cool air across portions of the Midwest back into the east. Warm air, though, on the West Coast with this warm high pressure area, potentially well above average temperatures in spots there. So where you have the ridging across the West, you normally have troughing somewhere across portions of the East. Now, we talked about our neutral ENSO cycle. So no La Nina, no El Nino really expected, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be other pattern drivers. We do expect a negative EPO or a negative Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And what that means is this area of ridging normally occurs around the Gulf of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest, and that pushes some warm air across the West. That pushes an area of troughing and cold air. Midwest, portions of the Great Lakes, well into the Northeast, you can have multiple bouts of Arctic high pressure push on down with this jet stream. That will likely be the divider between the warmer and the colder air. We could see a setup where some moist air comes across the country from the Pacific, and where these two meet up could be a winter battle zone that we'll be talking more about here in the next few maps. Here's Mark with a little bit more. All right, kicking off our region-by-region region forecast here with the northeastern United States. Uh, it's going to take a little while to get cold. I think the first part of winter in December will actually start off a little bit warmer but then towards late December and early January, that cold air is going to hit hard and fast. And it's going to be plenty cold across all of the northeastern United States. That's also going to mean plenty of active lake effect for Watertown, New York, Buffalo, New York. I think we'll see uh, above average snow, uh, lake effect snowfall in that region this year. And as you get towards the coast, frequent coastal storms. We'll see some rain near the coast early. Eventually, I think we'll see mostly snow. But just inland, we'll see plenty of snow off any coastal storm that uh, comes up the coast. And up the I-95 corridor, too, I definitely think we'll see a couple... 
significant systems throughout the winter. How many? A little too soon to tell. How much snow we get? Definitely way too soon to tell. We have to wait for the system to develop first. But if you're a fan of these big East Coast storms, I think you're going to uh, like this winter. I think we'll see at least a few this winter. How about for the mid-Atlantic? Plenty of cold and snow down here, folks. Uh, cold really locked in once it does settle in across Pennsylvania and uh, West Virginia, including Charleston, West Virginia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, State College. And then we'll still be cold along the coast, but that's where we're going to have that active storm track. So plenty of precipitation to go about. Rain near the immediate coast, snow just inland. And let's not forget, you do usually get some ice down here uh, once or twice throughout the winter, especially across Virginia. And that's really not going to be any different this year. As you get into northwestern Pennsylvania, of course, for Erie, active lake effect, you'll likely see above average lake effect snowfall there this winter as well. Moving a little bit further down the coast, how about uh, Florida here, folks? Let's start uh, warm, less precipitation, really nice. This is why people go to Florida for the winter right here for weather just like that. I think the orange crop will have a nice season this year as well. This uh, weather will also extend across the immediate Gulf Coast into Mobile, Alabama, southern Mississippi, and then on off into Louisiana and Texas as well. Where will it be colder? Well, up towards the Tennessee Valley into the mountainous region in North Carolina. When you're near the coast, that's that southern edge of that uh, active storm track. So you'll see plenty of rain and some snow there as well. And then everything will kind of be swinging back and forth across much of Dixie here. Uh, warm and cold air, uh, wet and dry at times, just depending on the exact storm track placement of the storms, etc. that will kind of be the varying factor here. But there will be times where it will be cold. There will be times where it will be warm and, again, wet and dry. How about the Midwest and Great Lakes? Very, very active. Now, again, it's going to take a little bit of time for this cold air to sit in, but when it does, somewhere around early January, it's going to come in in a hurry. And what does that mean? Well, warm lakes, cold air, plenty of lake effect snow where you would expect it, Marquette, Michigan, the eastern shore of Lake Michigan, and then also off Lake Erie here in northeastern Ohio. Above average lake effect snow is likely because it's going to take a lot of time for ice to develop on the lakes, and I don't think the lakes are really going to quite freeze this winter, folks. Uh, we will have plenty of cold air, but uh, with that late start, that means those lakes are going to stay warmer for longer. We're also going to see frequent clippers moving across the region, and while those typically bring anywhere from one to three inches of snow, what's going to happen behind it likely is it's going to bring us some reinforcing cold air and a wind shift that's going to favor, yep, more lake effect snow. So if you're in one of these lake effect snow zones, not only that clipper bring you a few inches of snow, you'll get a few more inches from the lake effect. As you get down into the lower Ohio Valley, the mid Mississippi Valley, still cold down here. You'll still see your snow. At times, you'll see systems bring some rain or, yep, maybe some ice. We usually see a few systems bring ice into this area uh, every winter. And a couple of them this year, yeah, they might be significant as well. Uh, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. So that'll be something you have to watch out for uh, this winter. Now, if you're running a snow and ice management business and you want more of this, check this out. If you run a commercial snow and ice management company, you already know that making smart decisions begins with the weather forecast. But before savvy snow managers roll out their fleet of equipment, they need accurate and reliable weather information. NeoWeather provides impact-specific forecasts for your coverage area. Going above and beyond for high risk and zero tolerance accounts is essential in a competitive marketplace. Our clients say that we are the edge that they need. It's absolutely vital. I would go so far as to say if you don't have an accurate forecast, there's no way you can be competitive with the people that do. So with NeoWeather, you're going to get a 90% correct forecast. With the apps, you're flipping a coin. Yes, definitely. Frustrated with weather apps and local TV forecasts? They aren't meant for $1,000 business decisions. You need accurate weather forecasts with a focus on impacts and your service area. You need NeoWeather to give you peace of mind. Detailed weather information allows snow contractors to better schedule staff, prepare supplies and equipment, and have quicker response times. Yeah, take this for example. Holding crews back a couple of hours based on a more accurate storm arrival time saves your monthly investment for our service. Personalized service, uh, great communication. Uh, it's just a great, it's a great partnership. I think, I think they go the extra mile to, um, to help us succeed. 
We have a new client portal system to deliver interactive radar, current warnings, our forecast products, and more. Whether it's days out with our NEO First Look or our exclusive forecast breakdown, you'll receive detailed and easy to understand content. Got a question? Just give us a call or send us an email. We're here for you 24 seven. You can't get that with Siri. Visit our website and request your free quote today. Neo Weather, the leading front in weather. And welcome back everyone. We are going to pick up right where Mark left us off with that active Great Lakes pattern we were looking at. That's gonna continue to extend west, especially in portions of Minnesota, where you're gonna to continue to see that frigid air coming down from Canada. And then really this whole region right here, you guys are gonna be involved with frequent clippers that come down out of Canada. So that is always fun to deal with from portions of North Dakota down into the eastern parts of South Dakota, all the way over to Iowa as well. And then the eastern part of Iowa, you guys are gonna get in on that frigid weather Two, and then as we move further to the southwest, other portions of South Dakota and into Nebraska, you guys are going to be kind of in that swing period where you're going to see periods of warm, cool rain and snow and could get in on a few ice situations as well. Then as we move into the plains and the deep south portions of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas, you guys are going to be in on that unsettled pattern with the warm and the cool, the rain and the snow and some ice chances. And that's gonna extend all the way into Arkansas and portions of Missouri. Then as you get to look at the rest of Texas from Dallas to Houston, all the way over to New Orleans, you guys could be looking at a drought situation with warm and dry conditions throughout much of this winter. And then as we take a look at the Rockies and the West, it is not looking good for the ski season out here as we're looking at a pretty warm and dry winter ahead all the way from Seattle down to San Francisco, Central California, in the portions of Nevada. And it won't be until you get to Southern California where we finally get to see some wet spells with the moisture and the uh, precipitation coming in off the Pacific Ocean. That extends into portions of Arizona as well. And then over here in the Four Corners region, that's where you had the best shot of seeing a little bit above average snow. Otherwise, it's gonna be pretty much typical mountain snow in this area. And then for everyone else, you're looking at pretty much that swing pattern we've been talking about between warm and cool, rain, snow, and a few icy situations as well. And now we turn it over to Brian to sum things up for us. So we showed you a lot of the regional maps and what we expect overall, but this really puts things into perspective. Where's the cold going to be? No big surprise where you have that dip in the jet stream widespread cold area, Chicagoland, Grand Rapids, Buffalo, up into portions of Albany and New England. And then flip side, there's where your ridging is likely going to be. And this could be very warm temperatures, Vegas through the desert area, Utah, up into maybe portions of the Pacific Northwest as well. Now, if you're really worried about a consecutive bad ski season, don't be too concerned because there's going to be a decent amount of precipitation across portions of the Rocky Mountains here and spreading down in towards Southern California as well. So in those higher elevations, it will be cold enough still to get a fair decent amount of snow. Different story across the Cascades. There you go, Seattle area, probably a lot less rain and snow, especially compared to what we saw last year. And that's also going to be a little drier across the southern plains where we have some of those cold blasts that might get down at times. It's probably not going to produce too much in the way of storminess. Different story out east. That looks to be the main wintry area, and that's also where we're expecting the cold. So you know what's coming. Here's the combination. This could be big time in the snow zone here across our nation's capital, up across the I-95 corridor, Boston, New York City, up into portions of New England, the Birmingham area. And it's probably going to be snowy in Cleveland and Detroit in portions of Peru, Illinois, back towards the Twin Cities area as well, where we have that area of cold. It might not be as active of a pattern across the Great Lakes and portions of the Midwest as what we saw last year, but I still think you're going to see a fairly decent amount of cold and snow.
Thank you for watching the 2019-2020 winter forecast from NeoWeather. For more information about NeoWeather, visit our website at neoweather.us. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram for the latest weather updates. And if your business is frustrated with using multiple smartphone apps and forecasts from TV, visit our website and request a free quote today. We would be happy to speak with you and show you how NeoWeather can add peace of mind to your business and deliver an accurate forecast throughout the winter. Our weather information is centered around your specific impacts and operation, which provides great value. Having easy access to a team of meteorologists help you be the best snow removal company in town. Thank you for watching. Our live Q&A is coming up next.